Well, good morning. <laughs> I'm Pamela Waldrop Shaw, and I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the love. Hey, so would you like to be on the edge of a breakthrough so that this time next year we're celebrating your glorious victories out on this stage? Your starter kit. Do you remember the day you ordered it? Who else was there? What were you thinking? What were you wearing? What were you dreaming? What hope did you have? What was it that caused you to edit your credit card number, click accept and sign your name or your virtual check mark to say, yes, I am going to do this. The answer to that question discloses your initial why. Why did you decide to open the doors of your Mary Kay business? Now, the reason I want you to tap into this again today is because there's a gap in between the fulfillment of your dreams and the challenges you're going to face along the way. Your why can bridge that gap. And your uber awareness of and passion for that why, it's the strength of your bridge. What is it that keeps us where we are, even if we want more from our Mary Kay business? Your why may be too dim. When I was 26 years old, I sat at a small restaurant table across from a woman who became my independent sales director and mentor. As we conversed, I became aware of the need for which I had not considered a solution. And although I loved my job at that time, teaching high school English and dance, I was financially drained after only four years of it. $16,000 in personal credit card debt, earning about $12,000 a year. For a couple of Christmases, I had relied on my parents to get me home from Florida to Kentucky, and my mother slipped me cash to shop for my siblings. This, after they had sacrificed to pay five years for my four-year college degree. <laughs> I knew it was time for me to step up and take full responsibility for my choices. And in the moment of that restaurant coffee and conversation, the flexibility and no territory features of the Mary Kay marketing plan felt like a great solution for my debt and time completion. My life consisted of 90-hour work week of class preparation, grading papers, drill team rehearsal, dance team rehearsal, cheerleading practice, musical and choreography practices, and I got excited. And with a $125 balance in my checkbook, payday still two weeks away, that level of belief was my only why that I needed to write out a check for $89.25 to Mary Kay Inc. for my starter kit. My why has shifted over the 29 years, but that was the initial bridge for me. What's yours? Is it your family? Do you want to send someone to the college of their choice or stay home with your children? Is it to build your dream home or to remodel the one that you live in? Or is it to buy a vacation home or go on yearly vacations to create memories for your children or grandchildren? Is it to support something or someone that you're passionate about? Or is it to give back and take care of your aging parents? Do you need to earn the use of a career car or is it credit card debt or student loans? Is it the freedom from your employer and a job that you don't like or that you're not called to do? Is it so that you can design your life and live your vision without the time restraints of something that someone else places on you? One way to test the strength of your why is to ask yourself, what if I don't? What if I don't do this? What if I don't pursue the Mary Kay opportunity? Then what are my options? For me, I'd witness my parents, now retired educators, scrimp and work two to three jobs, taking on curriculum writing and, and bookkeeping jobs. My dad was also the choir director and organist at our church. And I knew that even though I might earn more as I gained tenure in education, it would be very difficult to get out of debt by taking on another job, given the number of hours I'd already committed to the school. At this stage of my Mary Kay business, I did not see becoming a sales director or a leader at all. I just saw getting out of debt. It was my only why. As I considered my alternatives to do that, I didn't see any other reasonable solution. There weren't apps or iPhones or iPads or desktop computers to start tracking my progress on my debt reduction. So I did pull out a spiral notebook with my bills written out. And monthly, I tracked those numbers and snowballed those credit cards and reduced that debt enough to realize this opportunity works. And along the way, guess what? My why expanded. And as I heard more Mary Kay success stories and I attended local success event and career conference, I started to dream again in my heart. I started to dream again and think big again. Have you allowed yourself to dream? 
Dream big, sisters. There's nothing you'll see in the story celebrated on this stage that you can't also accomplish, that you can't have, that you can't do, that you can't experience, that you can't live, and that you can't own. But let's keep it real. You've got obstacles, limitations, time restraints, fears, challenges, insecurities. Oh, wait, hold on, because you don't know enough people. <laughs> or you went to a party and the hostess hid in her house. When I saw that on the, on, on the video, I almost started to cry because I remembered that moment for myself. You've got other obstacles. You got a recruit and she quit and you invested in some inventory and yours is still sitting all on your shelf. Or if you're like me when you got started, mine was still in boxes for several months. You see, we all have obstacles, real or imagined. But when the image of our why is strong enough, we'll give effort in the face of fear, rejection, or possible failure. The discomfort, I'm telling you right now, it's worth the growing pains. From high school English and dance teacher in debt, $16,000 to five years later, a million dollar sales director, I'm standing here to tell you that if I could do it then, you can do it now. <laughs> That's right. That's not so much time to invest. Oh, I get you feel scared. I get you feel insecure. I get that you have self-doubt and obstacles because you're thinking, sure, you can do it, but can I? I didn't know anybody in South Florida other than my students, their parents, and my fellow teachers. I did not have a built-in customer base. There was no text, booking, no Facebook attraction, no social media, no public branding of Mary Kay products or the Mary Kay opportunity. It was up to the individual to share all of that. And I was petrified of the phone. And I was petrified of the rejection that might be waiting for me on the other end. Seriously. To book appointments, I would go to my apartment bedroom, shut the door, put a towel under the door to buffer the sound from my roommates, go to the opposite side of my bed, lay under the bed to make phone calls in a whisper to make sure the rejection didn't get outside of my room. <laughs> Seriously, people, you can't make this stuff up. I was scared to death. <laughs> my first hostess booked me three times before I said yes, and when I went to her party, I carried my unopened starter kit to her front door. <laughs> and Carol said, what's that? I said, I hope it's everything we need. <laughs> Eight and a half years ago, I lost my then 40-year-old husband, former University of Florida football player, triathlete, and love of my life, to ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. He supported me as I grew my national area, leaving me with our 12-year-old son to raise alone through puberty and high school. <laughs> Thomas had a rough time finding his way. And I had a, a very private and deeply painful journey, single parenting him through it. Today, he's 20 months sober and a sophomore at TCU in Fort Worth. And I stand here grateful to the core for my Mary Kay business, for the lessons I learned out of my comfort zone, for the friends and countless layers of support from my Mary Kay family that lifted me up when I was sinking, the years of growth and success and sacrifice and hard work that preceded my personal tragedy and sustained me through it. What about you? Are you willing to master one more skill? Are you willing to give one more act of bravery? Are you willing to have one more conversation? Are you willing to overcome one more obstacle, one more sale, one more team building appointment, one more time to remember your why? You never know how close you are to the edge of a breakthrough and it might be that one. You know, when you're getting ready to have a baby and you think, I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> and anybody will tell you, you're within 45 minutes of delivering a baby and holding your baby, right? But you get to that point and you think, I cannot do this anymore. But the reality is in 45 minutes, you've got a baby. Some people are lost in the fire and other people are built from it. Which one will you choose to be? I know life hasn't or isn't or won't be perfect for you either. But great moments are born from great opportunity and that's what you have here. There will be an ongoing competition for your life's direction, a battle in your head, one voice competing with the other. The voice you believe will determine the future you experience. When there is power and strength in your why, your best future can win. Most people fail at whatever they attempt because of an undecided heart. Success requires the emotional balance of a committed heart. When confronted with a challenge, the committed heart will search for a solution. The undecided heart will search for an escape. What's your default when you hit an obstacle? 
when fear overcomes you, when you face a challenge. Decisions we make are often circumstance-based, feelings-driven, not founded on faith or wisdom or truth. Small decisions can shape the quality of your life, and they will, because private victories precede public victories. These seemingly small decisions shape what happens to the years, who you do life with, and who influences your children, and where you'll travel, and what you'll learn, and what you'll earn. Life will happen. You face a choice. You have to pause and ask, what are my options? Sure, stick-to-itiveness, perseverance, determination are all character traits worthy of pursuing when the going gets tough, but connecting to your why, it gives you the power to keep moving forward. What is my why to push me through this? What will my response be? And then pick up the phone and make one more booking call, one more team-building call. There will be other voices that try to play into your failure. The people who are telling you that you can't, they're not really talking to you at all. They're talking to themselves. They can't. You can. They can't. Where do you want to be five years from now? Where do you want to be five years from now? From debt to million dollar director? Where do you want to be financially, spiritually, career path title? You grab your why and you design your life. Nobody assigns you the life you're living. You get to create it. If you don't know where you want to be in five years, you're already there. Your strength is in the stretch. If success was within the boundaries of what you feel comfortable with or with what you already know, everybody would be driving a pink Cadillac. Everybody would be on the top sales director trip. Everybody would be wearing a national sales director suit. Hey, newsflash, obstacles aren't unique to the less experienced. Obstacles are no respecter of age or ability. We all face obstacles daily. To overcome, you gotta get out of your comfort zone. Get used to uncomfortable. Are you willing to do that? We all love the sweet sound of a yes. Oh my goodness, when she got her yes, you know, she's shuffling. You're like, oh yes, I know that. I know that move. I know that yes. We all love the yes or a belief for what we're doing. And we all repel getting a no or doubt from others. The no need only affect you for a millisecond. Shield it off. I can assure you that you will not remember the no's on a luxury top sales director or NSD trip. That will not enter your mind. You won't remember the no when you see your loved one graduate from the college of his or her choice, from your dream home balcony. When you unleash the power of your why, the mountain will move and the clouds will lift. So let your why be the, okay, so what? Now what? To any disappointment that comes your way. Embrace the accumulation factor. What you choose on any given day accumulates. Faith or fear, lazy or leisure, give up or push through it accumulates it's just like what you eat every day accumulates it's like what you exercise every day accumulates it's what you spend or save it accumulates your success is the same way it will be the daily activity the daily focus determination staying the course to accomplish your next victory you are right now where you are based on choices accumulated over time one year from now, your result can be the accumulation of your choices over the next 365 days. Isn't that exciting? Trust the process and focus on your why. Maybe you need to reinvent yourself. Do you know what I mean by that? Reinvent, see yourself a little differently because the image, how you see yourself, that, that, that way you identify with yourself, the way, the identity that you see of yourself, that's the one you're gonna live out. At the beginning of my Mary Kay business, my personal work identity was that I was a high school English and dance teacher. I had very difficult time embracing my identity as a Mary Kay independent beauty consultant and certainly not a sales director because I repelled the word sales out of my family lineage, my history and experience, lack of knowledge. It took a minute for me to reframe the possibilities and to embrace the identity that I hold of myself today. That identification shift is a process and it evolves. I moved from I'm a great and devoted high school English and dance teacher who does Mary Kay. Two, I'm the best Mary Kay independent beauty consultant in all of Fort Lauderdale and former high school English teacher. The way you see yourself projects your determination to others. And do you know what drives that? Your why. Reinvent yourself. 
turn the page of the storybook of your life and you start writing, sister, this is not the way the story is going to go. Rewrite it. You rewrite your story. You rewrite the next chapter. You get to write who you are and it can strengthen you as you invest more deeply in freeing yourself to take on that new identity. What is your identity today? Is it historical, keeping a list of wrongs or failures, insecurities and fears? Is it present with uncertainty as to the outcome? Or is it rooted in a future vision, one that you'll fulfill, one that you will do the work, master the skills, create the habits, because your why is just a little bit bigger than your fear. That's all it has to be, just a little bit bigger. Gratefully today, my why is no longer to get out of debt. Today. I get to live and work out of inspiration and service from my sweet spot. There are still obstacles and challenges that sometimes seem too big. But when you have a history of overcoming them, and when the gratitude is bigger than your fear, you can become a person who continues to grow and increase, walk towards your vision, your destiny. What is your why? How will it recall? How will you recall it in times of doubt? Try to put on your courage, sisters. Get in beast mode. A turning point is when you think a new thought and it moves you in a new direction and you decide to be a beast about it. The secret to your success can be strongly connected and related to your why. Mary Kay Ash, the lady said, never give up. Though many times adversity surrounds you, never give up. Success is just around the corner for the person who refuses to quit, end quote. Dream big, own your why, keep going. I wanna stand on the edge of glory with you and I'm believing that I'm going to at seminar 2016. Are you ready? God bless you. Thank you.